Hey, what's up, everybody? Hello there. Welcome to 10 Minutes with Teddy and Tina. A discussion of life, love, family, and faith. Yeah. This episode is entitled Advice for Single Christians. Part. Part two. two. Part two. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, we, we, we just, uh, we just, we would just want to drop a couple nuggets on you. So let's okay. just get right into this thing. Um, uh, Y'all don't want to be married so bad. You just really want to be happily married, happily ever after. So bad that you don't know how to be happily single. Mm. Like you're completely neglecting the opportunity to enjoy having your freedom to live your life and do what you want to do and not be subject to anybody else. Don't miss that opportunity. If you are not happily single, news flash, yeah. you are not going to be happily married. If mm. you think Marriage is what it takes to make you happy. You're going to put way too much pressure on your spouse, and you're probably going to make them very unhappy. Well, check this out. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me say this. Let me say this. Okay. When you get married, it only exposes everything that's wrong about you. <laughs> it exposes what's right, but it's, it's definitely it's going, going to expose it, because, yeah, what's wrong It's going to expose you. what's wrong because you're joining yourself with somebody who ain't nothing like you. At all. And so if you ain't happy being with you and loving you and, and, and enjoying you, you're going to get next, you're going to get with somebody and you probably resent them. Exactly. Because they're going to bring out all the bad stuff for you. You'll be like, I didn't even know this was, I didn't even know I would like right? this. You're going to think it's all them. No, it's kind of you because you remember you wasn't happy before this either. Um, but I'm going to give you this advice. I'm going to go on and read it because I don't want to miss none of it. It was good stuff. It says, if you're not happily single, you will absolutely positively not be a happily married individual. Because you're going to bring that same attitude and that same wrong perspective into your relationship and then expect your spouse to make you happy when the perspective should be to get married um, so your spouse can share in your existing happiness and create more of it with you and not be just the supplier of it. Mm. That's wrong, y'all. Mm. If that's what you're looking for in a marriage, you're actually looking for God, not a spouse. My, my, say it again. If you're looking to be made happy in marriage, I'm getting married so I can be happy, you ain't looking for no spouse. Yeah. You looking for God. Yeah. Let him make you happy. Let yeah. him fix what's ever broken, whatever you feel like is missing and all that kind of stuff. You got to take that to your uh, to God because your spouse ain't going to be able to do nothing with that but get frustrated that's, about that's, it. That's that book we uh, we talked about uh, on the last called, uh, called, uh, episode. Uh, 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 Sacred Marriage by Gary Thomas. Is what if marriage was supposed to make you holy and not happy? Hmm, how about that one? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we just want to advise you to find God yeah. first. Work out letting him feel whatever the emptiness is, all yeah. the holes and all the stuff that you need to get fixed and all of that kind of stuff. You want to take that to God first so he can fix your bad perspective and your bad practices. Get happy with Jesus and then take yourself, you know, somewhere to be joined yeah. with someone else if you choose to be married. Jesus first. Marry him first. Yeah. Marry Jesus. Marry Jesus. God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Marry them first. <laughs> okay? And then find a spouse. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, learn to love yourself. Learn to love yourself. Teddy, because see, the, the, the thing is this. <laughs> you don't even like yourself. Yeah. You get on your own nerves. Yeah. But you want your spouse to like all of that, and you want that you want all your ignorance to not get on their nerves when you get on your own nerves. Yeah. Y'all, that is so unfair. That is so inconsiderate. You won't fix you. You won't deal with you. So you don't like you, but you want them to love you, like you, build you, and help make you. Yeah. You ain't put that much effort into your own self. Yeah. How selfish is that? How unrealistic is that? How unfair is that? You're putting all the pressure on them, again, to make you, to create this, and you never took yourself to God. Your spouse is just not going to be a, as good a God as God yeah. is. Like, God got his position on lock. Yeah. So you take that to him so you can work through those things. Things with them. Otherwise, you'd be like, why don't you like me? You never liked me. You don't like you. Right. You talk about all your flaws and all your shortcomings. You sit up and have, you know, days of negativity or whatever, but you expect them to only see what's good. That's unfair. That's unrealistic. Now, yes, your spouse should speak, uh, uh, should see what's good. They should speak to the spirit 
the spirit that's right. in you, not necessarily all the outward manifestations. Because sometimes you really are a good person and you mean well, you just can't get that thing right. right. So your spouse should be able to see that and speak to that, but they should also be able to see that, see and speak to the manifestations of your goodness, yeah. the manifestations of the work that you put in and how you're transitioning. Not yeah. just you know, I see that you're so much better than you are, but you never actually choose to be the better person that you are because you don't, you don't like you, so you ain't dealing with you, but you, you want them to deal with you. Now, Jesus said that you're supposed to love the Lord thy God with all our soul, all our heart, all our might, and love your neighbor as yourself. Mm-hmm. How are you going to love your neighbor as yourself and you don't love you? Neighbor toe up. How are you going you gonna, to you gonna reflect a love that you don't even have for yourself? And you <laughs> that's, that's going to create a horrible scenario for when you're trying to get married. Absolutely. Uh, but I think that's why God went on and hit us with, look, a new commandment right. that I gave you. Jesus said, listen, I want you to love everybody as I yeah. have loved you. Because yeah. y'all kind of be getting this thing wrong when you love people the way you <laughs> love you. You ain't even loving yourself right. Yeah. I'm going to read this part here because this is some good stuff. Uh, it says, some more advice for y'all. Don't look anywhere other than heaven mm-hmm. <laughs> for someone to complete you. That is serious. You complete me. No, 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 no. Spouses do not complete you. God does. And once you are complete in him, you're ready for a spouse and not a moment before that. Broken people are what break marriages up. (laughs) Incomplete people are why marriages end up being incomplete and ending early. Uh, if you're incomplete without somebody, that means you're half finished. Not done. <laughs> Put yourself back in the oven with God. <laughs> and let him do the work on you before you work out your life with someone. Otherwise, you might ruin their life and actually think it's their fault. The bottom line is be fully joined to God before you join yourself to someone in a marriage. Uh, scripture, 1 Corinthians 6 to 17 says, he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I want to re- go back to uh, in, in the beginning of the Bible when Adam was doing all his stuff. He was yeah. working, he was he was tilling the ground, he was, naming, he, the he was naming the animals, he was doing all this beautiful stuff. I mean, he was the man. He had complete relationship with the Father. One, he had a direct line of communication with the Father, with no hindrances. It wasn't until that point that he was completely whole Mm -hmm. in his union with the Father, it wasn't until that point that the Father said, okay, hold on. You all good now, so it ain't good for you to be all whole and complete on your own. I need to make you a helper, and I'm going to make you a helper from your completeness. So that means when I pull Eve out of you, she's already complete. Because you was complete. Yeah, she's complete because I pulled her out of your completeness. And so now you all are both one with me, and now you're one with each other. What? Adam didn't go looking for a wife? I got everything going on for me. You know what I'm saying? I'm ready. I'm going to make her. I'm going to help her. She need to be. I need to have somebody that's dope on my side. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm ready to really, you know, give her life. Yeah. Yeah, Adam didn't actually look for no. Jesus looked at him and said, you the bomb. You ready. Mm-hmm. I'm going to give you somebody to help make some little me's in this earth with. Speaking of which, uh, here's a scripture, Proverbs 18, 22. It says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Yes. I want to really help you understand, uh, understand that scripture. It's like, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. That doesn't mean that the man is out looking like, I'm going to find my want to look and see, oh, that's the, that's my wife right there. That's my wife right there. That's my wife right there. I don't think that that's what the father <laughs> meant. It meant when you find her, when she is actually revealed to you as you're on your journey seeking me, you obtain favor with me. If you are out seeking above all else, now it's not a, you don't, you can want to be married. Yeah. You can want to be married and have the desire for a godly covenant and express God in the earth through this covenant. You could want that. But if you want that above the father, he doesn't, I don't think that that's his will. That's absolutely that not ain't his the will. Word Why? Word. Because you're going to make a God of whoever it is yeah. that you marry. You know, they're such the end all be all. Life starts with them. I was incomplete until I found you. Yeah. I was unhappy until I found you. I just was lacking until I found you. So yeah. you're expecting them to make up the lack and fill in the void. And they're just not capable of yeah. doing that. No matter how amazing they are, that is a godlike responsibility. So you don't want to go looking, yeah. you know, to give somebody that responsibility or to replace somebody uh, with God. Like, be one. Be fully into yeah. him. And I'm telling you, he'll send you somebody that's the bomb. Yeah. That's going to do you good and not evil, yeah. you know? Yeah, you got to enjoy yourself with yourself <laughs> with the Father. <laughs> All mixed up in there, too. 
exactly. got to, you can't, you, you got to, if you, if you don't enjoy yourself, you'll enjoy your life with the father. You're not going to enjoy your life with somebody else. That's right. Because he is the one that completes you. He is the one that makes you whole. He is the one that gives you life and that more abundantly, not your spouse. I want to leave you with this book. This book I recommend for all single people. It's called Sacred Search by Gary Thomas. This book is going to unravel you. It's going to help you get to the core issues and the reasons of why you want to get married. That's right. I believe it's going to help you. I like it. Really? I like it. Well, if you're looking and searching for that someone or you you know feel like you know you're ready, make sure you are fully yeah. complete in God, yeah. sold out to God. You find yourself, your identity, your value in him. Yeah. Because when you give that to somebody else, yeah. Boy, that's looking like some happily ever after. Yeah. So we hope this was good advice for you. And um, now may the blessings of the Lord that make rich and add no sorrow forever be yours. And we'll see you in two weeks.